for the topic I'm going to speak about, I've longed for an audience that would be excited. I hope you'll still be excited after four minutes of my discussion here. But um, thank you. Uh, speaking for Pattern for Progress, our Chairman David Farland's with us tonight. Our staff is here tonight. Um, we're extremely grateful for this recognition, and we extend our congratulations to tonight's other recipients. Uh, now, let me also say that when Anne and I spoke recently about tonight, she wanted to be certain that she knew that I had only three or four minutes to speak about my topic. And uh, uh, you know, I was thinking more like 30 or 40 minutes, but I would never try that with this audience. <laughs> um, but then Anne rewarded me by asking that I address, albeit briefly, the pattern's efforts to promote shared services and consolidation in municipal government. This is a topic about which Pattern is passionate about, but what underlies it, which is of importance to all of you, is the overall desire to reduce local property taxes. Um, the first thing that struck me was the distinction between standing here before friendly faces versus standing up in the face of anger and sometimes venomous words when challenging the logic, cost, and inefficiency of having so many units of local government. Um, thanks, Anne. I, I really do appreciate the opportunity of being able to speak about this issue, and certainly not about the Yankees' home opener. <laughs> um, let, me, let me just start by, by making a couple of observations. People generally say that they dislike and hate government except when asked to do away with their own local government. They hate Albany, and they hate the way that Albany acts, and yet they return over 90% of the time the same assembly members and senators because they like their assembly member and their senator. They hate their school taxes, and yet, they overwhelmingly approve their school budgets. Now, I have to tell you, if your mission is to restructure local government in the face of these dichotomies, pattern has a tall order in front of it. Now, this issue is nothing new. I'm going to hark back to 1927 and 1930, 1930 a period not unlike the one we're in right now, for those of you, unfortunately, feeling the pinch of the economy. In 1927, Robert Moses, the great builder, realized that the scope of interlocking problems, water supply, zoning, transportation, can never be solved by the existing system of government. There are simply too many separate and independent municipalities, towns, villages, counties, as well as the state, to quote Moses directly, before you can solve these problems, you have got to change the system of county and town government. This is an obsolete form. You can't tackle the job with these in place. 1927. Now, not to be outdone, his political enemy, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, also has been quoted in a similar fashion agreeing with his nemesis that our system of government is a weight upon the progress of New York. So in 1930, Roosevelt went so far when he was governor to say that the layers of government must consolidate, eliminating many of the local layers in order to retain any appropriate measure of home rule over local affairs. Well, 80 years later, in an equally turbulent economy, we're asked ourselves, is this the best system we can create? And is this why our taxes are so incredibly high? Obviously, a pattern we believe we can do much better. And by getting our arms around the problem, there's the glimmer of hope that we can stem the tide of ever-rising property taxes. In my remaining time, let's define a simple strategy for reform. First off, it's not going to happen by going from one person to the other and pointing the finger and simply saying, you're wrong. The essential component must be courage. 
courage to stand up in each of our communities and say, it's time we did better. The responsibility doesn't lie with one political party or the other. It is up to all of us to embrace the scary need to abandon the status quo and find some grounds for compromise. As Patrick is learning through its work with more than two dozen municipalities in Ulster County right now, restructuring the way government does business doesn't have to be a total upheaval in one day. Incremental steps toward shared services can lead to a string of modest successes that eventually can be expected to stabilize taxes and keep our kids from moving out of the state. So when you look at the number of police agencies operating in Orange County with overlapping jurisdictions and duplicative expenditures on equipment, and I can go on, or if you choose to look at the number of school districts throughout Orange County, at least for a moment, you could consider consolidating or at least sharing some services. We must encourage bold leaders to come forward and a courageous community to support them. That's where all of you come in. Were our Hudson Valley neighbor, FDR, still alive today, I think he'd agree that getting our local governments to be more efficient and less costly is the ultimate act of home rule. This is a golden pattern and I hope it is one that everyone in this room can help work toward in the future. Pattern for Progress heartily thanks you for this honor and for affording us this platform and time on your agenda. Thank you so much. Thank you.